planet Earth lives with a dazzling star. Every instant, the uncontained thermonuclear fusion device that we call the Sun blasts trillions upon trillions of energetic photons in all directions. Eight minutes and 20 seconds later, Earth's upper atmosphere gets hit with about 175 petawatts of solar radiation. That means that every instant, our world is walloped with 10,000 times the amount of power consumed by the entire human population over the course of a full year. Over billions of years, plants evolved to tap that flow. But in just the last half century, humanity has figured out how to plant its own solar energy converters and so begin to harvest vast amounts of electric power from this bountiful, self-renewing source. Imagine that you are a beam of sunlight. You happen to fall this day on the city of Mountain View, California, home to Google and its sprawling campus of low and wide buildings. Had you landed in most other places, you'd just have wasted away as spurious heat, contributing to global warming. But here, in the more than 9,200 solar modules of the Googleplex, you begin a new life as electric current, powering the lights and air conditioners and computers of the internet giant to the tune of about 1.6 megawatts. That's about 30% of Google's energy needs. These modules are called photovoltaic, meaning they convert light to electric current. Many of them are on rooftops, but a number have been built over parking lots, shading the cars while pulling power from the bright California sunshine. Most of that sunshine strikes the Earth as visible light or near-infrared light. A little under a third of it is bounced right back into space. But the planet manages to grab about 70% of that sunlight, holding it in the oceans, continents, and clouds, directly powering the wind, the waves, and the weather, and converting that power to biomass in plants. Daylight varies with the seasons, but the amount of solar energy that shines on Earth during one single summer is greater than all the oil, gas, coal, or nuclear resources that have ever or could ever be found anywhere on Earth. In this now famous visualization, researcher Matthias Loster showed that all of humanity's energy needs might be met by dense forests of solar cells occupying just the relatively small area shown in black, where there's abundant sunshine. Of course, when electric transmission lines stretch across hundreds of miles, significant power is lost heating up the wire. So it makes sense to collect solar energy pretty close to where it's going to be used. What we want, then, is not a few gigantic forests of collectors, but a great number of small solar groves. Or small solar gardens for remote sites that have critical missions. Isolated places, for example, which depend upon communication with essential services. Let's speed up time in this solar vineyard. Like flowers that turn to face the sun, these rows of collectors track the light throughout the day. In sun-drenched cities around the world, demand for power tends to peak when air conditioners are working the hardest. And peak power is expensive power. When it's 100 degrees in Los Angeles and 110 in Las Vegas, the wholesale price of electricity can jolt up to four times the off-peak price. But that's pretty much when the local sun angle and strength is at its optimum for conversion. In other words, solar power tends to work best when the need for it is greatest. Buildings can be located and designed with solar in mind. So-called Building Integrated Photovoltaics, or BIPVs, can make bold architectural statements. Or more customary forms can be styled to seamlessly incorporate solar. Or the generating technology can be blended right into the roof lines of traditionally styled homes and offices. Entire towns and cities are coming to incorporate these techniques. Like this, the Jotan Rinku village in Osaka, Japan. 
or the developing City of the Sun in the Netherlands. Back in Mountain View, California, Google is finding that their solar farm will pay for itself in about seven years, then dramatically lower the company's utility bills for at least 20 more. And Google has become an inspiration, with other large corporations in the neighborhood investing in similar systems. The seed of solar power is spreading from rooftop to rooftop. And from field to field. Each solar grove. Another node on the grid. Another orchard of the sun. <laughs>